I'm an explorer and a gear geek. I'm always on the lookout for what's the best piece of kit for any given task. If something isn't doing it for me, it's gone. I've tried a lot of gear. I'm not a collector. Everything I have has a role in either my music making or music playing workflows. Because of this, I've developed some very strong opinions on what I like and don't like, what works for me and doesn't, and what's worth spending my money on and earning a place in my world. These impressions come from the perspective of a working live electronic music performer and music producer regularly releasing tracks and performing internationally for the past 15 plus years. This is not a deep dive technical tutorial. I watch Loop Hop and Red Beans Recording and Cuckoo and Dave Mac and EasyBot for those just like I'm sure you all do. This series is about sharing my opinions and insights from using the gear to actually produce and perform music professionally in the hope that they'll help you make better decisions on what will work best for you. These are my thoughts on Electron Drum Computers. So there's been a lot of noise online since the Syntax came out from Electron. Some people love it, some people hate it, some people are blown away by it, some people are underwhelmed. But through all of it, the questions that I've been asked the most are, is it a replacement for the analog rhythm or the Digitact? Should I sell my rhythm or my Digitact to get a Syntax? And if I have a rhythm and a Digitact already, what purpose would the Syntax possibly serve? In this video, I'm gonna offer my perspective on how these three machines are similar, how they're different, how I use each, and who or what each is best suited for. Hopefully this can help clear up some of the noise and help you decide if any of them or none of them is right for you. These are my thoughts on the Electron Drum Computers. So when we say Electron Drum Computers, what are we talking about? There are three of them that are in production today. Of course, there are legacy machines like the Machine Drum, but those aren't included in this comparison today because they're not currently in production. They're difficult to find, and when you do find them, they're super expensive. So what we're talking about today is the Electron Analog Rhythm, the Electron Digitact, and the Electron Syntact. All three of these are marketed by Electron as drum computers. So first, let's talk about the similarities because there are quite a few. There is a lot of overlap between all of the Electron machines, and obviously within the drum computer segment, of Electron, there's going to be a lot of overlap. The biggest similarity, first and foremost, is not coincidentally the biggest strength of all three of them, and that is the Electron Sequencer. If you're doing sequenced music, it is second to none, and they all feature it prominently. Another big similarity is the user interface. Um, they have all the same size screen. Next to the screen, there are eight knobs. And within the screen, there are eight different functions on each screen that are controlled by the corresponding knob. That workflow is the same across all of the machines. And it is equally as intuitive no matter which machine you're working on. And it's great if you've learned one and then you're moving on to a new one for the first time. That user interface, even if the functions within the screen are different, the way you interact with them is exactly the same across all the machines. And so it becomes very, very intuitive. Also, the, the tactile feel of the hardware, you know, the, the clicky buttons, the way the knobs feel, things like that is the same across all of the machines, same quality on all of the machines. Uh, same size, actually the knobs and the, the, uh, a lot of the buttons are interchangeable between the machines. And you'll also find a similar kind of button per function where if you want to go to the filter page, you just hit filter and all of the functions on that screen are controlled by these eight knobs. If you want to go to the amp page, you just hit amp and then all of them are controlled by these knobs. There aren't multiple layers and layers of deep menus to dive into. You can switch easily between each one of the different functions or different sets of functions just by one click on a button. And that's the same across all of the machines. They even share very similar positioning. So within the Syntax and the Digitact, you've got Trig, then the Syntax has Synth, and this has Source, which is where the sample comes from. Filter, Filter, Amp, Amp, LFO, LFO. And on the Analog Rhythm, you have Trig, Source, and Sample, because it includes both Filter, Amp, and LFO. So again, if you're going from one to the other, you're gonna feel very comfortable because there's a lot of similarities in the layout and the workflow between all three of the machines. Another big similarity between all three of these is, regardless of the sound source, the sound shaping is very similar between them. So filters, LFOs, um, amp envelopes, things like that, and the way that they're controlled, the way the graphics look and all of that stuff is very similar between all of these. 
All three of these machines are also compatible with Overbridge, unlike some of the older legacy machines, including the Octatrack, which does not have Overbridge compatibility. So all of these can be connected very, very easily to your DAW, and you can multi-track audio out of all of these over USB into a DAW into multiple tracks at the same time. And another big similarity is all three of these have external inputs for audio. So you can run other instruments through these, or you can chain them together with each other if you want to and that audio signal that's being passed into a machine can be processed using the internal effects in all of them. The effects aren't the same and where that signal is inserted into the audio chain is not the same on all of them but the fact that you can process external audio through each of the machines is another similarity. Next, let's go over some of the differences. Now, the biggest difference is the sound sources. In the Syntact, you have analog and digital synthesizers as your sound source. In the Digitact, you have samples as your sound source. There's no synthesizer in here. There's no samples in here. And in the analog rhythm, you have both. You have eight analog synth engines, no digital synth engines, eight analog synth engines over 12 tracks, and the ability to either replace on each of those tracks the sound with a sample, or to layer samples with those audio engines, with those synthesizer engines. So you could, for example, have a sample of a kick drum, and if you wanted it to have more of a click at the beginning, you could just add that using the analog drum synth. So again, Syntact has analog and digital synthesizers for the audio source, Digitact has samples for the audio source, and Analog Rhythm has analog synthesizers and samples for the audio sources. Another difference between the three is the number of audio channels that each of them has. The Syntact has 12 audio channels, the Digitact has eight audio channels, and the Analog Rhythm has 12 channels with eight different synth engines. Next, if we look at the capability to sequence MIDI, to sequence other instruments with MIDI, the Syntact can do up to 12 channels because you can swap out the audio channels for MIDI channels, uh, whichever ones you want. The Digitact has eight dedicated MIDI channels and the analog rhythm does not sequence external gear. This, this sequencer can be used on all of the internal voices separately, but it cannot sequence external gear. Hey there, I was just editing and I realized that I wasn't completely clear about something concerning the MIDI sequencing from the analog rhythm. When I said that it can't MIDI sequence external gear, I mean that it can't in a full functioning kind of way. They added in an update a while ago the ability to send note and velocity information to external gear, but that was it. It doesn't do MIDI CC or anything like that. And because it's not a full functioning MIDI, I don't really count that as MIDI tracks that you can use to sequence external gear. I hope this clears that up and uh, now back to the rest of the video. So MIDI tracks up to 12, eight dedicated and zero. Next, if we combine those two things, if we combine the audio tracks and the MIDI tracks into how many tracks can be used consecutively, how many tracks can you sequence at the same time on each machine? So the analog rhythm has 12 tracks, all internal, that can be all sequenced individually. So 12 tracks at the same time. The Syntact also has 12 tracks that can be sequenced at the same time that can be divided up between audio and MIDI. The Digitact has eight dedicated audio tracks and eight dedicated MIDI tracks, meaning it has a total of 16 total sequenceable tracks. The form factor is also really different between these. As you can see, uh, the analog rhythm, it's actually bigger than the Syntact and the Digitact combined, much heavier and much less portable than the Syntact and the Digitact. All are constructed the same. They all have metal outer casings and are very, very strong, but these two are much smaller than this one in form factor. The power consumption also differs quite a bit between the three machines. The Digitact requires one amp of power. The Syntact requires just over one amp, so it has a two amp 
power source and the analog rhythm requires two amp because both of these include analog circuitry which draws a lot more power than the digital circuitry that's inside the Digitact. There are also some real differences in the live performance features between these machines. Digitact has the ability to take in two mono inputs and run those audio sources through them and you have individual control over those two channels. Each has their own mixer channel and the ability to add delay and reverb to each independently. The Syntac can take in two mono channels as well, but they're on the same audio channel. So you can't affect them differently or set them at different levels within the Syntac. As far as performance goes on the analog rhythm, it has um, a performance mode, an entire mode dedicated to performance. Um, it has a chord mode. It has scenes that you can set up to act in different ways that you can perform using the pads. So much more full featured as far as performance goes. And the unique performance features on the Syntac, it has the mode buttons. Two of the four can be assigned. One is always velocity and the other one is always a re-trigger, but those can be used for performance. And then you also have the ability to use master effects on the, the Syntax. You can route any of the engines on here or the external audio coming in through the analog effects block. So you can select which channels you run through the effects and you can use those as a performative element. Speaking of master effects, that's another big difference here. The Digitact and the analog rhythm both have a master compressor and the Syntax does not have a compressor. The Syntax, however, has the ability through the effects block to use a negative amp envelope and you can actually sequence that on the effects track so that you can add kind of a side chain pumping effect where the other two actually have compressors within them. They have master compressors that you can use for compression. The filters are also different on these. Um, the, the filter on the analog rhythm is analog. The master filter on the Syntax is analog and each track has its own filter. The four analog tracks have analog filters and the four or, and the eight digital tracks have digital filters. And the filters on the Digitact are digital. Each one of the tracks has two filters actually, as do all of eight of the digital tracks on the Syntax. They've got a base width filter as well as kind of a traditional filter on each one of the channels. So that allows for some interesting sound mixing on the Syntax because you can shape sounds on the eight digital tracks using the digital filters, and then you can drive them through the master analog filter and analog overdrive in order to give them some analog warmth, even with the digital channels. On the other two, analog is always analog, digital is always with digital. Talking about master effects, they're all different on all of these machines. The analog rhythm has an analog distortion and a master compressor. The Syntax for master effect has an analog overdrive and an analog filter, but no compressor. And the Digitact has a master compressor. Another big difference between these is sampling and how they handle samples. There's no sampling at all on the Syntax. It is purely a synth. The Digitact is a sampler and sample player. You can load samples into it or you can record samples into it or you can resample. And the analog rhythm, you can load samples in, record samples, and also resample. One of the things that's really interesting with the analog rhythm is that you can shape unique drum sounds using a combination of the synth engines and the sequencing, and then you can resample that into a new sample, and then you can use that sample to further layer within this, or you can assign it to one of the pads as its own drum, or you can take that sample and load it into the Digitact. And finally, another big difference between these is the note input. So in the Digitact and the Syntax, notes are all either played in or sequenced using the sequencer buttons and they are not velocity sensitive. But on the analog rhythm, it has these 12 velocity sensitive pads, which you can use to perform or record into the sequencer. So there's a lot of similarities, a lot of differences. Each one has their own unique combination of features that they use. So with all of that considered, who is each one of these best suited for? So starting off with the Digitact, this is a great machine for people who enjoy a sample-based workflow. They enjoy collecting, manipulating samples. They may have extensive sample libraries already from other production equipment. This is great for somebody who is sample-based. 
It's also really good for live performances because it does have a lot of performative capabilities and it's very portable to be able to include in a live setup. D-Tact is also great for people who have a lot of external gear to sequence because it does have those eight dedicated MIDI tracks for sequencing which don't interfere with the eight dedicated audio tracks that it has as well. So 16 total tracks on the Digitact make it the most robust as far as the number of total tracks. So Digitact is a portable sample-based groove box that can be either standalone or it plays really well with others. Next, let's talk about the analog rhythm and who this is for. This is really ideally suited for sound designers and music producers who want to create their own sounds from scratch. Synthesized samples, combining those two, resampling. The engines for creating sounds and layering sounds and manipulating sounds go very deep in the analog rhythm. The rhythm makes a great studio drum machine because it is so versatile and so diverse. But it's also good for live setups if you don't mind the less than ideal size. The rhythm is also great for producers and performers who prefer the flexibility of a combined synthesis and sample based workflow as it allows for not only the best of both worlds, but it allows for combining those two worlds into something that's greater than the sum of those two. It's also really good for people who are finger drummers, but who still want the electron sequencer. A lot of people who are into finger drumming and performing music that way would lean towards the MPC world or the Machina world. But if you wanted the electron sequencer, but you also like to be able to play in and perform the drums on velocity sensitive pads, the rhythm might be for you as well. Really the rhythm is ideal for somebody who is looking for a dedicated standalone drum machine, drum computer, drum sequencer, and drum sound creator. It can do way more than that, but that's really what it's best at. So where does the Syntac fit in as this brand new piece of gear within this electron world? So the Syntac is ideal for people who are interested in a synth-based workflow. If you don't like managing sample libraries and loading samples, and you don't like being limited to what a sample can do, but you would rather create sounds from scratch, the Syntac is really for you. It's also a great piece of kit for people who have a really diverse setup or an often changing setup, whereas the Digitac has eight audio channels, eight MIDI channels. If you need nine audio channels, you can't do anything about that. Or if you need nine MIDI channels, you can't do anything about that. If you have a setup that changes often, the Syntac might be great for you because it has 12 total tracks, but every one of those can either be an audio track or MIDI track, and it's super simple to switch from one to the other. So you could be going along and doing audio on track one, audio on track two, audio on track three. All of a sudden, you decide you want to sequence a piece of your external gear. You can just make track four a MIDI track and start sequencing away. And then you can go right back to having five being an audio track. And if your setup is changing constantly where maybe one day you're using the Syntac for 12 audio channels, but the next day you only wanna use three and you wanna sequence nine pieces of external gear, you can do all that with the Syntac because you have the flexibility there and you don't with any of the other machines. Because of that, Syntac is really, really great for live performers. All of these can be used live, but the Syntac has a really interesting combination of the small, more portable form factor, the large number of really diverse tracks that can be used for a lot of different things, and the ability to have 12 different voices at the same time, both drums and melodics if you choose to. All of these can do melodics as well, and in this, we're just talking about their capabilities as drum machines, but as a drum machine for live performance, the Syntac is a great synthesis-based drum machine with the small form factor. So the Syntac is a portable synth-based groove box that can be standalone and that also plays really well with others too. And now just really quickly, who is each one of these not suited for? Obviously the Digitact is not suited for somebody who's looking for a synth-based workflow. It doesn't offer as many options for sound designers and it's not for people who don't like the sample-based world and using, organizing, collecting, storing, uploading, downloading samples. It's also not for somebody who is looking for analog sounds or analog effects. It is a purely digital machine. The rhythm, I would say, is 
least suited for people who are looking for something portable and it's definitely not suited for people who are looking for something to sequence external gear. And the Syntac compared with the other two, it's not suited for people who prefer a sample-based workflow, that would be the Digitac. And it's also not suited for deep sound designers who are looking to layer samples and synths and things like that together, that would be more the rhythm. Now, how do I personally use these machines? I have all three. I'm keeping all three, even though I just recently acquired the Syntac, because I use them each very, very differently. Within my live setup, right now, I have the Digitact handling all of the drums, and the Syntac is not doing any drum sequencing at all. It's actually 12 voices of digital and analog synthesizers that I'm using for melodics and bass lines and things like that, while I use the Digitac for all of my drum sequencing. Both of these will be in my portable live performance setup. The analog rhythm, on the other hand, this is my absolute favorite bar none studio drum machine. This stays in my studio, connected to my DAW via Overbridge and connected to my other gear via MIDI so that I can jam on it with other synths, with other instruments. It can provide the drum tracks for me. If I want to do something more old school, I can load up 909 samples on this all day. If I want to create a bunch of new samples, I can. If I want to create banks and kits and sound packs of everything, I can do that on this. So this for me is my production studio drum machine where these two are both portable live performance machines. And actually I use these two together for performance, but I use the rhythm and the Digitac together for performance as well, because all of the drum sounds that I have loaded, all of those samples that are loaded into the Digitac were made or manipulated or tweaked on the rhythm, dialed in the way that I wanted those drum sounds to be, particularly the kick drums, and those were then loaded back into the Digitac as samples. So they do work together, even though they're not both always in the same place at the same time. And as far as sound quality goes, all three of them sound fantastic. They could all very easily be used in production or in live performance. If you're enjoying this video, I'd really appreciate it if you could give it a like and drop me a comment down below. It really does help the algorithm push this out to a few more people so more people can see this information and hopefully it can help them in their decision making as well. And if you enjoy this content and you'd like to support the channel, there's gonna be links down in the description below for my Patreon, where patrons get free downloads of all of my live performances that I do on the channel, uh, upcoming sample pack downloads, guest list to shows when available, and the ability to join in on our Discord channel, which has been a lot of fun recently, lots of back and forth and lots of great information sharing for people who are developing their knowledge and their interest in electronic music making as well. And another way you can really support the channel is if you're considering get, getting any of this gear or any gear at all, if you click on one of the affiliate links below and then you decide to buy something, a small percentage of that purchase does come back and help support the channel and at no additional cost to you. So let's just real quick take a listen to some patterns that were sequenced on each one of these machines. Let's get started off first with the analog rhythm. Next, we'll go to the Digitact. and next to the syntax. Keep in mind that all of the sounds that you just heard were from the Syntact, were made within the Syntact, created within this machine and sequenced here. The sounds you heard in the analog rhythm were, were created within the analog rhythm using 
the analog synth engines and samples as well, layering those things together. And everything that you heard in the Digitact was a sample that was being played back on this. So as you can hear, there's not a ton of difference once you're actually using them. So sound quality or ability to actually be a drum machine is not really distinguished between the three of these. They all sound great and they're all extremely capable. So now some final thoughts. All three of these machines are extremely capable. They would be a worthwhile purchase if you're looking for a really full featured drum machine. Take all of the information that we've talked about here today and use that to help you decide one over the other. If you're not performing live and you're doing everything in your studio and you're looking for a real standalone drum machine that can handle those dedicated tasks better than any other drum machine I've ever used, then go with the analog rhythm. If you prefer a sample-based workflow and you need something portable or you're gonna be performing live, definitely go with the D-Tact. And if you're looking for that portability, all-in-one, but you prefer a synth-based workflow and you like the ability to have analog and digital together and analog effects, definitely go for the Syntact. Keeping in mind, as I mentioned at the start, the biggest strength of all three of these machines is exactly the same, and that is the Electron Sequencer. If that's what you've decided on for the basis of your sequenced workflow, you can't really go wrong with any of these machines. Then it just comes down to audio sources and effects and manipulation and how you prefer that workflow to work. But you're gonna get that great Electron Sequencer with any of them, so you can't really go wrong if that's the basis of your decision. And if that sequencer isn't right for you, or if it's not a necessity, or if sequencing music isn't at the core of what you do, then probably none of these machines would be the best for you. You may want to look at something like an MPC, a Machina, a Roland MC707, a Synstrom Deluge. All of those are very, very capable machines. They all are great and tons of fun for making music on, but none of them have the sequencing capabilities that these do, as these don't have a lot of the capabilities that those do. So it really comes down to what's your primary deciding factor for how you wanna work. If it's the sequencer, you're gonna to wanna to choose between one of these. And if that's less important for you, and other things are more important, you're gonna to wanna to go for one of those other ones for sure. I really appreciate you choosing to spend a bit of time with me here today. And I hope this was helpful in maybe showing you the differences and the similarities between these machines and maybe help you decide which one, if any, you want to get or maybe rule them out altogether if you realized after this that they just don't have the features that are important to you. The equipment that we use for music making is a really personal choice and it really comes down to what works best for you. These machines work really well for me, but they may not work well for others. And there's machines that work really well for others that I just never gelled with. So thank you so much for choosing to spend a bit of time with me here today and I uh, hope to see you in the next video. In the meantime, take care of each other.